Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. It is uh, another Thursday Desk Era webinar demo today. Uh, my name is Tim McLaughlin. I'm here on the sales team, joined by Taylor Otto. We've been doing these demos for the last couple of weeks, short little tidbits throughout our MRP software. And this week, we're going to be doing a end-to-end -end demo of our Desk Era MRP brief overview, a highlight of all the major functionality of it. Lucky to be here with Taylor, who's going to be guiding us today. Taylor, how are you today? Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, Tim. Yeah, my name is Taylor Otto. I'm an implementation consultant here at Descara. Super excited to be back for a weekly webinar. Uh, we've kind of broken down MRP and different functions that uh, Descara uh, provides and how that can help your businesses. And today we're going to be doing an end-to-end -end, uh, MRP demo showing uh, all the way from receiving a sales order, um, how we convert that into a a work order, how we utilize our scheduling and how that is affected. We'll talk a little bit about job workouts, basically kind of put everything together that we've touched in previous webinars. So if you if you go through today and you're watching this and you see, hey, I want to learn a little bit more about uh, forecasting or job workouts, um, look for the webinars that we have on YouTube already and, and LinkedIn and uh, for more information. But we're super excited to kind of bring it all together today. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and hop right into it. So when we talk to our clients, oftentimes they're facing certain business challenges within their manufacturing processes when they're looking to move into an MRP software. One of the things that they're often trying to sort out as they grow is managing the lead times of their products and of their needs. Yeah, managing lead times, very important, um, especially when you're trying to make sure that you have enough materials uh, in your inventory to fulfill orders or create products. Um, so you, having a tool that can utilize managing lead times to just ensure that and be able to plan ahead is, is super crucial. Yeah, and that wraps right in with, you know, as you're managing those lead times, it's properly uh, planning your production and adjusting out what is needed and being able to put together a schedule to properly get everything out to your clients in time. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of aspects that go into MRP, uh, planning your production, making sure that you've got resources in place, making sure that you are allocating those resources and having a, a big picture view to what's going on in your warehouse. Um, and yeah, thirdly, stock management, making sure, again, that you're not overstocking or understocking, utilizing forecasting, for example, to try and plan ahead for what your anticipated sales are going to be and, and ensure that you have enough product in place to fulfill those orders. Absolutely. Yeah, I think we might as well go in and start showing through, showing what that process looks like. So today we're going to pretend that we're selling furniture. Today we just sold a chair, just completed that sale to a, uh, to a customer. They let us know the specs of what they're looking for. We just got that sale done. What happens now, Taylor? Yes, we're going to jump right in here. Uh, we've got our sales order here um, for a chair and we're you know, again, kind of usability, I can create a work order right from this screen, super helpful. And we're going to be creating a chair today. Um, what this does is this brings me right to this screen. I can see everything in my bomb explosion, um, my materials that I'm using for this chair, what I have available, if I have anything required. Um, I can choose my plan start date, my plan end date. All of that is custom here. Um, because I have one product, one chair attached to the sales order, and we're linking this, this work order to this sales order, this is going to say at one, I have visibility into my operations here, um, what my anticipated duration of the operations are, uh, any costs that are associated with, again, all of this is tracked for me, um, which is really, really helpful. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start my start date is, is the fourth and my plan end date, maybe we'll do a week from now. So maybe we'll do the 11th is when we're planning on finishing this. And then we want to deliver maybe that next Monday. So the 15th. Um, so I'm going to have that details uh, saved here um, and just create that work order. So now that I have that created, um, I'm going to go into my work order screen. And let's take a look at this. Um, so what I'm first going to look at is my bomb explosion. Um, and I love this view for, for a variety of reasons. Number one, very clearly right off the bat. This gives me a great visibility on, do I have enough products to create this chair? You take a look here, we need a chair leg, we need four chair legs, a wood seat, a backrest, 20 coated screws, an instruction manual, a seat cushion, and some brown paint. 
this tells me what I have available. So I know that, hey, I've got my instruction manual, my seat cushion, my paint, all that's available to me. I've got a wood seat, but I'm falling short on chair legs, backrests, and coated screws. Um, also, I have this bomb view. I can make this as expansive or, or shortened as, as I want to. Um, so for example, if I break this down, this is showing me anything in blue is a finished good or a whip material, which means that there's a process in place to make that product. And anything in yellow are raw materials that I buy to, to create these products. Um, I also have view time into my lead times here. So it tells me how long can I anticipate um, it's going to take to receive these goods in if I need to order them. Obviously at the top here is our chair that we're making. Um, and this does allow me to interact with this data uh, all from this screen. So um, a couple things we're going to be touching on today is um, I'm going to create be creating a purchase order um, instead of creating a, uh, another work order. Um, I'm just going to simplify it and create a purchase order. Um, one thing I love about our system is we have clients that use uh, different whip materials. Sometimes they make it in-house and sometimes it makes more sense for them to just purchase it. Um, but our system allows you to do both, which is really helpful. Yeah, and I think we have included in there today the uh, the coated screw where you occasionally will have a product that you use in your materials or in your production that maybe doesn't make financial sense to make in-house. Maybe some of the materials needed to make that or the uh, specifications for the specialty product doesn't quite make sense to make on site. So today for our chair we're making, we're gonna have to order this screw so that we can complete this product. What does that look like? Yeah, absolutely, and you nailed it. Um, so job workouts or outsource manufacturing, um, a lot of times this, this ability to coat items. Most of the businesses that we work with don't have the means to do that in-house. So they end up outsourcing uh, to a company that specializes in that. Um, and so what we're going to be doing is kind of demonstrating the job workout again, where I can create a job workout right from here because I can't make a coated screw in-house. Um, I own products that I want to get coated. So in this process, I would be sending out materials that I already own. So screws I already own. I would be sending the, that product out to a third party and they're going to do the coding for me. And then I would be able to receive those goods back as coded screws. Um, so we're going to create that here. And what we're paying for here is the service. Again, I'm not purchasing a coded screw. I'm sending material I already own and they're going to do the coding. So let's say that they're going to charge me 20 cents per screw. So that's going to add up to about $4 for these 20 screws that I need. Obviously, I can change the amount that we're doing, but I'm going to keep it simple for here today, simple for today. Um, again, really nice. I've always had, I always have linkages to, to what's going on here. So this job workout, it tells me the work order that it's linked to. Um, so I'm ordering it here, my receive by date. I'm just going to say that I'm going to receive this by Monday. Um, we'll have that there. So I can go ahead and click save here. And I've got that job workout created successfully. Now, the next thing I'm noticing is I don't have a backrest or chair legs. So I'm going to need to create a purchase order for that. And what I can do is I can select these products and create a purchase order. And these products that I need are automatically going to, to populate here. So I don't need to close out of the purchase or close out of my work order, go drop a purchase order at a different screen, and then manually enter this in. This is all entered for me, which is super helpful. Um, I can see both of them connected right in there. Not having yeah, exactly for each item. Yeah. yeah, and the linkage is here. So it's linked to this work order. Again, everything is linked organizationally. It's, it's so good to be able to view this and see this. So I'll enter in just some arbitrary numbers here. It doesn't really matter. Just for example, purposes here. Um, and I'm going to save this purchase order. All right. And so looking over here, I've got my receive by dates updated here. So it takes into consideration what I have on the purchase order. And I've got that linkage here on the, the item level. So it tells me what purchase order that this is involved in. All that information is available to me in real time and in live time, which is super, super helpful here. So as I save this, um, I wanna take a look and I'm gonna be referencing the scheduling module um, kind of back and forth as we go through this process. So we're gonna go through scheduling here. Um, and take a look at this product that we are working with here. So what you're gonna notice off the bat is these are moving parts that are going into me creating this chair. So first and foremost, I've got my operations here and I've got my purchase order that I created. 
And this is going to populate kind of when I'm expecting it. So on this purchase order, I'm expecting to receive it same day. It's going to be showing there. My job workout, I had a little bit longer. I anticipated that being done on the 7th. And that gives me that visibility. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is colors. Uh, this tells me that this has not been realized. So if I was to eventually receive these products, you're going to notice that color turn green. Same thing when the job workout, when that is completed, when I've received those goods back, you're going to notice that color change. And we're going to talk a little bit about how that is affected with the operations as well. Very cool feature here is if I want to manually change uh, dates here, I can do so. And it's going to chronologically order the list here for me. Um, you'll notice that paint jumped ahead here um, because I have a condition that assembly needs to be done before paint. I've got that pre-listed in my bill of materials. So if I were to move assembly to the eighth, you'll notice the paint move with it, which is really helpful. Um, it kind of eliminates user error in a sense where I can't paint before assembly because that's just not how my business is set up. So it, just to kind of protect that is, is a really beneficial tool. Absolutely. Setting yourself up to properly schedule within that, uh, that warehouse and workplace. Yeah. So we're going to revisit this. Um, but first off, our main goal here is to get materials in place um, so we can create this work order. So I'm going to go over to my purchase order here. And I can see this one that I made right here. My chair leg and my backrest. Great. And I'm just going to receive those goods. So I'm going to receive and convert that into a bill that I need to pay. But I want to receive those goods in. So I've now received those goods. The next uh, item would be the job workout that I have. So um, again, we have touched on this job workout in a little bit more detail in a previous webinar. So if you're looking for more information, um, be sure to watch that. But I'm going to go into this job workout and I'm going to dispatch these goods. Now, what I said earlier in, in the, the webinar is that we are sending out materials that we already own. So we're not dispatching um, a coded screw, but we're sending out the screws that we already own. And we're going to receive those back in as a coded screw. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, take out of my primary warehouse and we are going to dispatch those goods. And what's really nice about our system is um, the screws that I own, it's not coming out of my inventory completely. The system's not going to think that I don't own these anymore. We're simply displacing that uh, until we receive the updated SKU. So I'll go ahead and click save. And you'll notice immediately that this changes to dispatched. We haven't received the goods yet. We haven't paid for that yet. So that's going to say as non-received. Just for example purposes and time purposes, I'm going to receive those goods back same day. Probably not realistic, um, but uh, maybe there's just a really fast service this day. Who knows? Yeah, some of those vendors getting it back to you that uh, same day. <laughs> Love to see it. So I received those goods back. And now what's happened at the job workout level, um, those screws that I sent out, I no longer have those screws. That now, because I have received the updated SKU, that those 20 screws that I sent out are now coming back as a coded screw. So my inventory for screws is down 20, but now I've increased my inventory for coded screws by 20. This is really cool. So now we're going to go back to the operations here um, into the work order. And now that I have all of my materials in place, I need to allocate material for this. So before you'll notice that I had a lot of unavailable here. But since we created our purchase order, we created our job workouts, we now have all materials available to us um, to create this chair. So I have a tool where I can auto allocate my whip products because there's enough in place. So this allocates to this product. Then I'm going to auto allocate my raw materials. And now I can see here that my allotted quantity matches up with my required here. I've got enough to do this work order. So I can click save and I can start that order. So you'll notice now that the status is in progress here. I've started this work order. I've got my materials allocated. So let's take a look at the scheduling module and see how that has been affected. We'll open up the chair and we're going to notice a couple things. So before we had our purchase order, um, we had a same day purchase order. So that was still on the fourth, but our job workout was a little bit longer. Um, I did not have to manually adjust my schedule based on what actually happened with the job workout. So if I received my job workout two days earlier than planned, or maybe I received it a little bit later, I'm going to see that automatically. I don't have to do that work, um, but that's going to update for me. 
Um, what's really cool is if that job workout was delayed. So let's say I was supposed to receive it on the seventh and it was the ninth and I hadn't received it yet. Um, the system's going to tell me, Hey, this is delayed. You should have had this by now. Um, and it gives you a very clear visual indicator. Yeah. That, uh, so does that, is that going to switch colors then? Yep. Yeah. That changes. Yep. Changes colors when you receive it. Um, so now we're going to kind of jump into the, uh, uh, the operations here. So what's really cool is I can go into my job cards and I'll show you what that looks like here. Um, and for my, for my user, I can see my operations that I have to do. Um, I can view by operator. I can assign it. I can view by workstation, what needs to be done. Um, all of this is visible to me. It tells me what work order this is a part of, uh, what sales order that this operation is, is tied up because that work order, we created this work order for a specific sales order. All of this is available to me. Um, and we did cover job cards in a previous webinar. So if you want to see more about how job card functionality works, please watch that webinar. Um, I'm going to focus more on scheduling today. So we're going to go into scheduling and I'm just going to show you how this updates in live time. So if I say, hey, assembly, I'm seeing that get, do get done. I know that that's completed. I can save that. And what's going to happen is because it's the fourth, my schedule is going to adjust. So you'll notice that that went from blue to green because I marked that as done. And you'll notice yeah. that color change. And you're ready to paint. And now we're ready to paint. Exactly. So if I click here again, very cool with the color indicators. If I move it to in progress, there's going to be a big indicator for me right here. So now paint is yellow. So this tells me, hey, I can see that I've got painting left, but this is in progress. So I know that I'm really close to getting this work order completed. Yeah, and when you... Uh are seeing that'll be done likely by the end of the day today. You can make adjustments as needed if you want to adjust your shipping schedule to send that out early to make sure that it's getting out to your client and working as efficiently as possible by moving things around just based on that data that you're given and what you can work with. Yep, absolutely. And, and the fact that if things get done ahead of schedule, my schedule is going to update automatically. I don't have to do that manually, which is so helpful for people that have so many moving parts to manage just to not have to do that manual work is so beneficial. Um, so I'm going to mark this as completed. And, you know, obviously today is the fourth. So that's going to jump there. Taking a look at my schedule here, I've got everything done. So I can go into my work orders. And I can see right here. I've got all, all of this allocated. I can complete this order. I can mark as complete. Um, we do have quality check. Um, I don't want to do quality check for this, so I'm going to skip this. Um, and I'm going to notice that this is completed and my status has changed. And now I'm able to fulfill that order because I've got a chair in stock now and we've gone through the process. Yeah, there we go. So we saw what it looked like to receive that material, to receive that uh, sales order, work through the entire process of what it's going to look like, um, working through those different functions, and then having that ready to be sent out to your customer. I think that about wraps up our very brief overview of our MRP software that we're going to be showing you today. If you have specific questions about anything that we were looking at today, please reach out to me or Taylor. We're happy to share more information. We do have those other uh, LinkedIn resources available through some of the uh, demos we've done in the past, but we're also happy to chat with you. You can find me on LinkedIn, Tim McLaughlin or tim.mclaughlin at descara.com, Taylor Otto on LinkedIn or taylor.otto at descara.com. Taylor, anything else you'd like to share today? Thank you so much for uh, walking us through that. No, oh, my pleasure. Yeah, just to echo what Tim said, if you saw anything today that you want to learn more about, please reach out to us, whether that's on LinkedIn or via email. Uh, we would love to have that conversation with you. Um, stay tuned. Our webinars are going to uh, continue um, and we are going to be talking about inventory management um, in the next few weeks and discussing different features that Descara can offer. All right. Thank you, Taylor. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We will see you next week. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.